computer in my flow. Got my tea, got my friend. We're good to go. You had that up today, all your stuff. I did. I did. All right. So cool. Um, so thank you for joining me. We are live on Facebook, recording in here. Oh, I know what. I have to do one more thing. I have to. You're in a practice session. Start the webinar here, too. I knew there was one more thing. <sighs> All the things. It's been a week. Well, it's been two weeks. Um, so I usually, I can't wait to introduce you guys to Susan McConnell, because not only do we have the same first name, which not many people have in, younger than us. Right now, I was just on another call with a Susan earlier this week. I'm like, yeah, they don't name baby Susan anymore. And when I graduated, I had... I think probably, I think there were 10 Susans in my class. It was, it was yeah, not now. Um, so before I introduce you to Susan McConnell, I have a digital marketing tip of the week. And actually, I have to just say my digital marketing tip of the week for you guys here today is to go over to the Rise Above Noise Facebook group. And Susan and I were just talking about this, actually. She was talking about how in the groups, so often there's just so much information. And if you're looking for something, it's really hard to find what you're looking for. Let's see if I, if I pull up my, I'm gonna pull it up so that you guys can see. So in the Rise Above Noise group, I've been trying, you guys know, I try to take you away from chaos. I try to take you away from you know, any of those things that are going to suck you away from what you came to learn. So I'm going to share my screen real, real quick, go through this. If you're in the Rise Above Noise group, there's two things you can do. So here's a search button. So maybe you want to know, oh, what did Susan McConnell, I'm not sure. Yeah, what did Susan McConnell have to say today in the group? And then that's going to show you, well, here's her, here's her profile. And she had something to say on here and someplace else. Maybe in the group you want to know, you know, what did Susan have to say about email marketing? Well, a lot. Me, 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 email marketing, right? So there's all the things. So that's one thing you can do is use the search bar if you're looking for a person or a topic. But here's what I've done in the in the Rise Above Noise group to make it easier for you. I know, like you scroll through this, it's overwhelming. And but look at. We've had so many awesome contributors to these threads. What I'm doing, don't get dizzy. What I'm doing is I go in, I've made units for the juiciest threads. If you are a member of this free Rise Above Noise group, you will never need to look anywhere else for anybody for any service. Come over here to resource threads here we have members testimonials so you can see what people are saying about our groups. I love this. The one liners so good in a second, in a microsecond, you can learn what people are doing. What's the problem they solve? Who do they ser serve? Same thing. Three word description. Um, this one I loved people sharing about being brave. Do uh, this one's fantastic service. So what I'm saying is you can go through these on your own, but I'm trying to make it super easy. Our juiciest threads are in there and I've given them topics that hopefully lead you there. The spotlight resources were all of the generosity that our members um, of the spotlight giveaway offered last week. You had little mini lessons for everything. What I'm going to do as soon as I get off the call with Susan is I'm going to go over here and make another unit where anything from this week's three day email boost challenge will also be right there. So you don't have to scroll through everything unless you want to. Everything is super easy. If you're running a group, I highly suggest um, doing the same. Now, hopefully that was helpful. And now I get to have my favorite time of the week when I get to shine the spotlight on somebody amazing. Susan McConnell is the owner of Smarketing Connect. Or, Right? Are we still using that? You were Marketing something. and diversified, whatever you'd like to say. Okay. We all multitask. Okay. Because <laughs> Susan and I did this a while ago, but I think that she's pivoting a little bit. So um, let's see. Over 28 years of sales experience, she has sold everything except for cars. 
She's the pre president of Diversified Sales Solutions, which is an outsourced sales lead generator from a sales perspective, mostly on LinkedIn, which is what we're going to be talking about today. And she's the co-founder of Smarketing Connect, a directory for sales and marketing professionals. And it highlights her ability to connect people that need to meet each other. If you've not gone to a Smarketing Connect networking meeting yet, highly suggest it very well organized, really great contacts. So I asked Susan, what is your superpower? And I'm telling you, you guys, we are like, we're like one person split too. She said, oh, can I have two? <laughs> so her, her superpowers are LinkedIn and connecting and introducing matchmaking people that need to meet. Tell me more about that, Susan. Yeah, I will. Um, it's just been an, an innate thing in me for, for many years. And when I started my business, we were going to networking events in person, um, literally uh, like three or four days a week, every single month. And so you're meeting a ton of people. And as you're meeting them and chatting, um, I'd be talking to someone and in my head, I'm like, oh, wow, he needs to meet this person. And this person needs to meet this person. And, and like, I'm not even telling them about what I do. I'm like, oh, I'm connecting all these people. Um, and so I've taken that ability to online on LinkedIn and I do the exact same thing. Um, I found three people jobs. I've found business for people. I've um, connected people from Boston and California and the person in Boston didn't even think they could do business outside of Boston. Um, it's great. It's fun. And, and it, it, it's just this way of connecting the world and it's, it's thrilling to me. It's like definitely a passion and sometimes it's a, not a good thing, but in general, I love it. What's the hardest thing for you? Yeah. I'm sorry. Did you say what's the hardest thing? Yeah. What's the hardest thing for you? Cause you said, cause you first you were like, oh, it's awesome. But then you were like, hmm, sometimes not so much. I'd be curious. What are your challenges? So I think, um, Sometimes I spend my time um, all over the place networking and introducing people. And sometimes I forget to even ask them what their problems are and how I might be able to actually even solve some of their problems. So it's, a, it's an interesting uh, dichotomy um, that I feel about that. But it's, like I said, in general, I love introducing people to other people, but I, I spend a lot of time doing it. Right. Yeah. Right, right, right. So and I need to focus. So when that's we're talking about, and I think that's the thing too. I, I just said that this morning in the live I did for the um, email um, boost challenge was that, you know what? I do all this stuff. I, I have networking, I have group, I have um, these spotlights. I sometimes forget to say what it is that I do, how I can help people, right? Like I'm, I'm so busy spotlighting this, that, and the other thing. So when you're, when you talk with people mm -hmm. about being their authentic, self and connecting through messaging on LinkedIn, how, right, how, how do you make it easier to be your authentic self connecting on, on LinkedIn? How do you, how do you go about doing that? Great question. Um, I first want to back up. You said something, and, and I've heard you say it in quite a few of your um, um, talks, you talk about serving others. Mm -hmm. Well, here's something that I've learned recently. You, yes, you are here to serve others, but you cannot serve others if they're not your clients. That's true, right? Right. So what I teach people on LinkedIn is how to serve others and be other focused, concentrating on their problems and solving their problems with your solution, which in technical terms is emotional intelligence. So what I do teach people is to, as we said, as you said, not to be um, salesy and spammy, but to be uh, authentic, but yet also be thinking about the other person and, and asking good questions that are using emotional intelligence and their interests so that they engage with you. Because if you're just asking random questions or sending random information, you don't even know if that person's interested in that or they're going to engage. If they don't engage, they can't become your client. So that's what I teach. And it's mostly in the messaging. So let me ask you something, because I hear people talk about emotional intelligence. I know. And I think 
you know, sometimes I'm like, well, shouldn't we just know? Isn't that just something we know? But how do you, like, let's say you're working with somebody who just doesn't get it. How do you bring them around to getting it? So you kind of have to look at how they're interacting with people and, and, and what they're saying. And yes, emotional intelligence is, yeah, you're in tune with their emotions, but if you don't know the other person's emotions, you're not going to be able to get them to engage with you. So it's about trying to get them to engage based on what motivates that person and that person's activities, what they do, what they're interested in is where you go with the questions. So can you give me an example? Of I can give you an example. Um, I can, uh, maybe I'll do this. I'll pretend that I am talking to you. I'll say, Susan, I saw your post in on LinkedIn about um, digital marketing and email marketing. And I see that you have done this for so many years. How is this going to, you know, with all, with the surreal situation that's going on right now, how is that going to affect your business this year? I see what you did there, right? Like, right? You, yeah. So you were like, cur you're like curious. You're not pushing. Well, what am I curious about? Yeah, you're curious about who you're talking to. Not like, uh, I can do this, I can do that. Love that. And it's a huge shift for me too. And it's something that I've, I definitely think I've always go down that path of asking questions about them or inferring about their interests and their, but I don't go as far to ask them a good question for them to come back and engage with me. And that's some of the, what, like I'm definitely a very high connector on LinkedIn. I definitely have a high appointment ratio, but I think that learning how to make it about them and ask a question that they will answer back so that you can uncover something will make you more successful. And I've been doing it for the last, I would say month and it's really producing some results. I have three great opportunities. That's, that's great. And also I know from personal experience, LinkedIn is upping their game. Like it seems like people, well, people are upping their game on LinkedIn between the live, the live things, the stories, if you use it on your phone, more groups, I'm involved in more groups that have been phenomenal through LinkedIn, like the people in those groups are rarely over on Facebook. But right. I think it depends on who your audience is as well. Right. And then so when you're in a group and you're engaging in a group, you can use the exact same messaging technique. You don't want to just talk to them in the group. You want to take it from the group outside the group. So you see someone comment in a group and you say to them, you tag them and you say, I saw you in this group and I saw your comment on this group Well, you make your comment and then you take it over to messaging and you take it back to the statement. I saw this question, how is that going to affect your business or how will you make changes this year so that they, they're saying, oh my God, she cares to ask me these questions. So it, there's ways to use all of those things. I'm not as much on stories, but I think that's just a, what's called the Facebook thing, but, um, yeah, um, just 80% of B2B leads come from LinkedIn. There's been a 48% increase in activity on LinkedIn and 75% of the people you um, use messaging now for prospecting and some don't do it right. 48% increase in LinkedIn usage in the past activity. year. Oh, activity. Yep. Yep. In the past year, is that what that is? Yeah. I'm writing this down. Okay. 40. Wow. And then I have, uh, I gotta go find it. There are 17 million opinion leaders and 10 million C-level executives on LinkedIn. And it says study shows that these professionals turn link, turn to LinkedIn to make buying decisions. So if you're connecting and messaging with people and they're not answering you, yes, there are certain people that are not going to answer you, but if you're not trying to get them to engage, they're just not going to, unless they're that kind of person that says, 
oh, and then goes and reads your bio because most people just will start talking to you and not read about you. Oh, and if you want to get into the profile, we could go there because then someone's looking at your profile. Yeah, let's let's do the lead leads and not icky thing because I think that yeah. is where really it's, it's a hard thing. So let's see. I wanted to see what the notes that you sent me to. So, oh, wait. So you talked about having metrics that can get you meetings. Mm -hmm. Now you're speaking to the geeky side of me. Tell me some yes. more. Yes. So, well, as you know, there should be a process around everything. And if you are trying to generate activity and qualified appointments on LinkedIn, you have to be diligent. You have to be doing your touches. So there's a certain amount of connect requests that you should be doing every day. There's a certain amount of what I call direct messaging that you should be doing every day and using this emotional intelligence because it's there. Um, it's about 30% of the people that I am direct messaging with them actually meeting with now. And it's way up from where I was before. So when you're, so you're doing, so what do you have for goals? So I was with somebody and she had, I think she called it the Q-tip and I don't remember why she called it the Q-tip thing, but she had a little <laughs> cup on her, the little cup on her table and it had five Q-tips in it. I think it was like for the soft touch or something. And she said that every day her, one of her income producing activities was to take a Q-tip out and put it in the other cup every time she did exactly what you're talking about. Like touch somebody, make them, you know, reach out to somebody, send a direct message, ask for a connect, that kind of thing. And she said that way she just, it became a habit. We're talking a lot about atomic habits these, these days. It became a habit. It got her, it, it, because she was committed to it. And then every time she would do it, not every time she would do it, but at least a, a few times she would get the connect or she would get the call and that was positive reinforcement. So right. then she wasn't focusing on the negativity of it. She was focusing on the positive. Positive. Of it. I love that. That's a, what a great, um, what a great way. A any way that you can track it. I do have, um, I call it a LinkedIn success tracker. I'm, I'm redoing it because it had almost too many metrics on it. And then I felt people weren't going to do it. I mean, there's so many things that you can track, but it's really very simple you got to connect with a certain amount of people every day and your number could be different. It could be 10. Even if you're doing 10 connection requests a day, that's 10 more people times 30 days. That's 300 people a month times 12 months. And if of those 30 people, 10 of those people start talking to you, that's 10 a day times 30 days. Like th that multiplies. And then if you try to track that message from, you know, talking to people to getting them to meet with you, um, so if you're doing daily activities, it snowballs, it starts to get bigger and then your network gets bigger. And then the people, I, I, and this is one thing I've, I always believe this, but I'm now it's a firm belief is that you're going to attract the people that you should be attracted to, or that you should do business with. And the people are going to be attracted to do that you should be doing business with them. And if you are yourself and you use this emotional intelligence, You'll, you'll find it. But if you don't do anything and you don't have daily processes that you follow, it's just not going to happen. You got to do it. How do you keep track? Do you use that sheet that you were just talking about? I know you said that you'll share that with I us do, later. I do have the sheet, but if I uh, do, you well, really do you use like, I'm wondering if you use it like a contact relationship management system or how do you remind yourself who you've already connected with or want to follow up with? Follow-ups. Yeah. So I do use, I use a CRM, but so I will not put somebody in my CRM till I set up a meeting because right now they're just, do you know what I'm saying? But what I do do every day to make sure that I'm getting those activities done is I do use the LinkedIn tracker. Um, but if I don't actually pull it open, if you want to look at my really messy piece of paper, I do the, the check. Wow. So that when I get to the end of the day, if I'm at 30, I got to do five more Wow! Um, and sending the 12 um, direct messages because you're sitting there with how many connections, how many connections do you have? I have a lot, um, whatever, greater than whatever. Yeah. You have a ton of connections and some of those people are still your prospects, but yet you still haven't talked to them and we're all still reaching out to new people, which we should be doing, but you can also what I call direct message and use the same strategy that I talked to you about 
with bringing emotional intelligence and sort of re-engage some of these people that you've been talking to. And that's another, that's where you do 10 or 12 of those a day and you're re-engaging some of these people that are still great people that you could do business with. You know what you're making me think of too? Um, I know I had um, Kristen Tagliamonte was on a few weeks ago and she was talking about the profile thing. And then recently, and again, I talked about atomic habits and doing the things and, and um, connecting. So you must know Matt Ward. He, um, oh, well, you should, but he does it. I went to a, he, once a month, I'll put the link in this thread again. Um, once a month, he has what's called the big connect. And so it was basically like speed dating. And oh, he actually, he just sent me his book. He is about word of mouth, right? Am I holding that up? So word of mouth referrals. Yeah. And when I heard, like, I work a lot with coaches and consultants and I is who I serve. And so, yes, I want that coach. Yes, I want that consultant. Yes, I want to help this creative. Yes, I want to help this energy healer. And what, I don't, I don't know why it never occurred to me before, instead of trying to do, in addition to reaching out individually to all the people, what I really need is referral sources. So what I really need are the website designers, you listening out there, website designers, graphic designers. I already have um, to introduce you to. <laughs> right? Like people who are working with clients at that higher level so that when they need the next thing, when they're ready for email marketing, I'm the person that gets um, referred to so that I don't have to do that work of like, you know, in getting more people. Like it's just a funnel of people. So, I feel like you're making me think now too, right? I do this, uh, I do this weekly spotlights, not for purely um, nice things. I learn things all of the time. Yeah. Now you're making me think how go through my list. Yeah. Do you have sales navigator? I do not. No. Okay. So I do, prom to, I mean, for anybody that has premium, um, I'd switch to sales navigator. You can try it for a month for free. Yeah. And what you can do is you can drill down by your first connects by, website designers by zip code. If you want, you can, mm. it's got really good filters. Should it have more? Yes. But then you can go back and see your first connections on who you haven't talked to in a while. And, you know, you look at their activity and you make a comment and then ask them a question and bang, they're re-engaging with you looking for referral partners. That'd be like, that's a no brainer to ask for. Like everybody needs great referral partners. So and, um, good. Yeah. Awesome. So, I'm looking through our notes now too, because I know we had taken talk about a few things and I might've gotten you off the rail. <laughs> we can go all over the place. So yeah, so these are the things that you had said that we were gonna, so we talked about transitioning, transition to online to grow. Yeah. So, I mean, definitely, and growing your network on LinkedIn without ads. And I love you already told us how you can do it in less than an hour a day. Do you use ads? Do you know anybody who's using ads? Is it effective? LinkedIn ads. Um, I heard they're expensive. Very to like Facebook. I, yeah. do, I sure, seriously don't know anybody that in our worlds that would be using it in yeah. like larger companies, probably. Right. Um, but why would you put that kind of money into ads when you could put more money into connecting with who you already have in your network? Like I'm saying, there's, I have 5,000 connections. Do I really even know all of them? I'm going back and Re, trying to reconnect and reopen the relationship using some of, you know, the skills that, you know, I've fine-tuned. Sales for 25 years and I'm always learning, always trying to find a better way. And, and that emo the emotional intelligence speaks to me because being the connector, it's kind of a way to, you're taking the spot like off of you and you're really putting it on them. Right. It's about serving others based on what they like. That's fantastic. Yeah. So where can, where can people find out more about you? Well, actually, no, before I even ask that, because I do want you to share your information, what's it like to work with you? It's, um, it's awesome to work with me. <laughs> but what do you do? Like, I'm like, yeah. huh, she's yeah, so, so interesting. I want, I think maybe I need her. How, what would I, what yeah, would I so I like? have two ways that I work with people. Um, I do one-on-one, -on -one, um, coaching and I have an, an eight week program that will be, you can do one-on-one -on -one an hour a week with me, but I also now have um, put together some workshops that I'm going to be doing also eight weeks where you'd be in a group setting. And what's really awesome for people that live in Massachusetts, I, I got my course approved 
by the express training grant. So if somebody applies for the grant, they'll get half the um, cost back. Um, so, and, and it'll be, you know, eight weeks of, of going from profile to setting the meeting. That's all I do. That's what they go through. And then we go through the section of your profile. I mean, I don't do the deep dive. I just kind of, again, with the emotional tenders, spin that to, you want to have your profile when somebody reads it, it speaks to what you do, what problem you solve for people that they have. Not, I am this, I am that. Right. That is one of my challenges when I start working with clients is that um, because I'm a nurturer, I have a tendency to go, oh, this is, but, but honestly, like sometimes I have to say, okay, so this is all about you and everyone is online looking for themselves. And so how, you know, to have to shift that. And I'm not necessarily a copywriter. I can help people with copy. I can help people a little bit with their messaging, but honestly, if they've worked with, you know, um, you mentioned that you're working with a coach. I've worked with coaches. It makes all of the difference to know what, to find out what is your why, what is your core, what are the core values? What are your non-negotiables? And then to move forward with that and to make it easier for people to understand where you're standing, where your, your, your flag is planted and how they can um, get more of these, uh, the results that you've had with others. Yes, um, but you also want to um, set yourself up as an authority. So in, in doing that, you have to, to say, I, uh, and if you see, if you look at my LinkedIn profile, you'll see, I have just redone it. Um, I've helped people, well, collectively with everybody, I've sent over 45,000 messages in my career. So you learn, you learn from the bad, you learn from the good and you learn how to go through it. So you've helped send 1 million email messages. That gives you the authority. It shows you're an authority and that's what you want to do. Right, um, I love that. You're, you've sent what well, it's probably more than a million. I'm just making the number up, but you've helped 40 clients send 1 million email messages in the last over my career. So that tell, so if I was reading that, I'm like, oh my gosh, she knows what she's talking about. I, I want to read that. more. And then they read more. And then you talk about problems that people have. So it's called problem, agitate, solve. You talk about a problem, kind of agitate it a little bit. And then how do you solve that? You solve that with your email marketing that you have done. That is so brilliant. Problem agitate solve, but I love that what you were talking about too, over 43,000, da, 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 however many clients, and you will see wonderful um, examples of that. If anybody's on Clubhouse, which yes. next week I'm going to start a room in Clubhouse, so join the Rise Above Noise Clubhouse next week. I'll figure it out by then. But huh. if you go through Clubhouse and you're looking at people's profiles, that's pretty much what you're saying yeah are, are some of the most compelling profiles is that they start with over x amount of people helped over this many like results and i results. love that you said problem agitate so results then you find the problem they agitate and yeah clubhouse is great you just have to um be careful you know don't join too many groups and i think the small groups are going to be way more successful than the large and i agree the large ones are good for learning. I was on one with um, Stu McLaren yesterday, who I follow like it's my job. Stu McLaren, Amy Porterfield, Donald Miller, I haven't seen on Clubhouse yet, but those are three people I follow and consume all of their stuff. And um, it's always great to listen to Stu talking about creating community and how to um, engage with people on a real level, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, look at your numbers. Yes, do the things, but also never forget that they're real people. Awesome. And get them to engage with you as real people as because you're a real person and they're a real person. So it's very cool. Right. And have a strategy awesome. so you don't get sucked into that rabbit hole. Mm -hmm. I have put your LinkedIn and your Smarketing Connect um, link in the on the thread. Is there anything else you want me to share as a link? Um, I don't think so, because you can get me on LinkedIn. And as I said, the, the course um, gets you the discount. And I do have that LinkedIn success tracker. I am um, modifying it. But if they send me an email or connect with me on LinkedIn, I will send it to them. All right. And when you um, when you create that course, please make sure to share it in the Rise Above Noise group. I think yeah. that I think that would be an awesome thing to 
for us to just up our game. Like we're working really hard as, as solopreneurs. It, it, it's good to be in a group setting to get hive mind and problem solve, but even better to learn how to get better business, more aligned business with more ease. And I think that's what you're bringing. Yeah, definitely. And um, they do do get two personal sessions with me where I sort of help them refine their messaging, but you you will and leave with ways to and strategies to to do it. So it's great. Yeah, I will definitely put that info in the, the group. Awesome. Awesome. Susan, thank you so much. Thank you for, for having being me. being with me. I'm going to, um, you guys, if you're just the second power, right? Yes. <laughs> yes, yes. All right. I'm going to, um, if you guys have any questions, pop them in the, the thread. Susan and I will be watching that over the next couple of days or tag us if you have any questions. Definitely connect with Susan on LinkedIn to get all of her notifications. Thank you, Susan. Thank you. I loved it.